okay uh, hi this is dr forum m joshi and i am going to represent today the fourth chapter of uh, the physics first year be syllabus and the chapter's name is band theory of solids uh, first of all why the band theory of solids and how it was developed it was developed by felix bloch in 1928 as zone theory as a zone theory it was very complicated so the popular name is the band theory of solids now how the bands are formed but before we study the band formation of the band uh, in the case of any isolated atom we should study the uh, situation in the isolated atoms the electrons in any orbit has a definite energy depending upon their four quantum numbers so they occupy discrete energy levels and the wide regions of forbidden energies separated uh, by the allowed energy levels the consider a large number of uh, identical atoms which are far enough apart such that their interactions are negligible so each atom has the same energy level diagram but if i consider the one on one and only the isolated atoms inside the uh, say solid say the solid is of sodium then one can say that in the sodium the outer orbital which is 3s1 it has it can be characterized by four principal quantum numbers the quantum number first quantum number is principal quantum number n it determines the size of the electron orbit it can have only integral values and n is equal to 1 2 3 up to it can take infinity level say how how can n take infinity level in rydberg atom there may be uh, there are existing n equal to 100 or 200 values and corresponding energies are also there now the second quantum number is uh, uh the angular quantum number l but for small n the corresponding electron orbits are denoted by k l m and n respectively and they are actually uh, the capital letters number of electrons that any orbit can accommodate is 2n square so n is the value which can determine the number of electron in any particular orbit now second quantum number is orbital quantum number l it determines the shape of electron orbit it can have values starting from 1 2 3 up to n minus 1 so the corresponding subshells to l are denoted as small s small p small d and small f the s is corresponding to 1 p is corresponding to l is equal to 2 d is corresponding to l is equal to 3 etc and number of electrons contain in a subshell are 2 into 2l plus 1 so it determines the number of electrons in a particular subshell in a particular orbit in the orbit the number of electrons are determined but by the small print small n the principal quantum number and here small l determines the number of electrons in a subshell now the third quantum number is magnetic quantum number ml actually it is magnetic orbital quantum number it determines the orientation of electron orbit and it can have the values starting from minus l to plus l including zero so for a given l uh, m has 2l plus 1 values the spin quantum number as we all know it it has only two values plus or minus 1 it shows the direction of the spin or say the self rotation and one can say that in any orbit in a, having uh, in any subshell there are two electrons one is the plus half electron another is the plus, uh, the minus half electron whenever the electron first electron enters into the subshell the spin is characterized as plus half and the second electron it will have the minus half spin now this four quantum numbers they define com- completely the set of electrons in an atom different physical and chemical properties of various elements are due to different configurations of electrons in their atoms now what happen if this uh, the set of four numbers four quantum numbers they are the one and the same actually Uh, as you all know in the pauli's exclusion principle there is a limit to the number of uh, this quantum numbers it says that no two electrons can have the same set of uh, quantum numbers hence an energy level cannot uh, ha- cannot more than uh, two electrons thus the energy level occupied by an electron is discrete in an atom now if two atoms come closer to each other 
consider when whenever we have considered an isolated atom we were thinking about the energy level diagram we have, we have said that it is uh, say uh, it has the discrete energy levels but now when two atoms they come nearer to the vicinity of each other now what will happen it will be uh, it will it both the atoms will have say the if we consider only the outermost shell electron for a sodium atom then it is a 3s1 electron and it has uh, both the atoms they have the same quantum numbers now uh, is the is Pauli's ex exclusion principle obeyed no now it is not obeyed and it is violated and how uh, how significant it is while uh, the formation of the energy band there are significant changes in their energy structures in order to obey Pauli's exclusion principle the positive nucleus of one atom attracts the electrons and repels the nucleus of the second atom. So, in this process, the energy levels of the inner shell electrons are not much affected. But as I said, the outermost electron uh, that is actually affected and it changes the energy level changes considerably. In order to obey a Pauli's exclusion principle, when two atoms come nearer to each other, new energy levels are established and which are discrete but infinitesimally very small and this group of closely spaced levels they are called band. Thus the range of energies possessed by an electron in a solid is known as an energy band. Actually we have considered two atoms but if we consider n number of atoms then there will be n discrete level of uh, discrete level of energies which are infinitesimally different. But uh, when we see from the outer side of the solid, we can see that it is actually a continuous range of energy levels and that is why we can say that this band formation occurs and actually each of the energy level of an isolated atom becomes now a band in the solid. You one can see here uh, in the graphics that uh, on the left hand side the isolated atom is shown energy level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it may be going, going up to continuum, it may be going, going up to infinity and on the right hand side, the atoms in a solid, they are shown as a bulk property. One can see the one band and the, at the bottom, there is another energy gap and uh, at the top level, there is a conduction band. Now, what are this conduction band, forbidden band and valence band that we will study uh, further in the chapter? But consequently, the 2s band in a solid, say s band actually, s band in a solid contains n discrete energy levels and twice n uh, electrons. Why? Because each of the electron will form a discrete energy level. So, uh, 2 in each energy level will, 2 electrons are there in each energy level. So, there will be twice n electron. Similarly, each of the 2p level contain n energy levels and 2n electrons. Hence, a band 2p band contains uh, 3n levels and 6n electrons. So, in general, each energy band has a total of n individual levels and each energy band can hold a maximum of 2 into 2l plus 1 into n electrons. The first two here that determines the spin that is due to the spin there will be 2 electrons. 2l plus 1 it shows the orbital quantum number say it is actually the number of l is the orbital quantum number and 2l plus 1 it is the mag orientation of the electrons. So, that much electrons can be accommodated inside that orbit and small n it shows the capital uh, sorry capital N shows the number of total uh, elect total atoms inside that solid. So, one can say that each energy band can hold a maximum of 2 into 2L plus 1 into N electrons. In an atom, uh, in the inner shell electrons are tightly bound to the nucleus. So, what happens while the band formation occurs, the outermost shell electrons are loosely bound. So, the inner shells, they are completely filled and they do not participate into the conduction. There is a splitting, but it is a very small, very narrow splitting inside the inner shell. As we have considered the sodium as our uh, reference atom, in the sodium 3s1, the outermost orbital atom, it will have a large uh, uh, outermost band. Of course, in, inside the band, there is there are discrete levels and the 
energy uh, difference between those discrete level there is also large but the inner shell electron which uh, which has the structure of the neon atom it has also the small small range of splitting but with compared to that 3s1 it is very small during the band formation the inner shells barely suffer any splitting the outer shell levels are widely split and form a uh, wide band the highest occupied band is called the valence band below which all the lower bands are occupied fully the valence band may even be partially filled why partially filled because of uh, say whenever 3s1 electron as we are considering sodium as our uh, reference atom we can say that in the 3s 3s level when the first electron enters in the sodium then it will be partially filled but when the second electron enters it will be fully filled band at that time 3s1 will be the fully filled band so what is the importance of partially filled bands uh, when we say that it is a partially filled band uh, whatever the electrons which are required for the conduction inside any of the solid they should be in in the in their valence band whenever the valence band uh, electrons they get some energy they will move to the conduction band so what are the two major factors which are required for the conduction first is the electron to be moved to the conduction band and another is the end external energy so if the electrons have sufficient space to move into the upper band upper energy level then then and then they can move so partially filled band they play a major role in the in the form of the conduction of the energy uh, now the empty band immediately above the valence band is known as the conduction band the gap between valence band and conduction band is known as the energy band gap or say the forbidden band actually it is the value eg which which plays a very important role in the classification of the solids an energy band diagram which can be which we have which we have seen in the uh, previous figure it is a graphical representation of energy levels associated with top energy band and the next lower energy band in a solid the bottom of the conduction band shows the smallest energy required by the electron to become free it it shows the smallest value of the energy which uh, an electron requires to be to uh, give the uh, current in the outermost circuit you can see the same figure here again and now you have a better insight you can see the valence band and the for and the conduction band and there is a forbidden energy band gap which shows the gap between the valence band and the conduction band so according to the band theory in a nutshell one can say that a solid is characterized by the energy gap eg which is separating the valence band and conduction band and the ability of electrical conduction is decided by the order of the magnitude of the energy gap eg one can see here in the previous slide if the energy gap is small then the energy required by the electron to move from the valence band to the conduction band becomes smaller and the conduction becomes easy if this energy band gap is larger then the conduction becomes uh, difficult so based upon this uh, one can classify the solids in three parts but before we can classify it we can we should find out the value of the energy band gap and we can perform one experiment uh, using uh, uh, power supply and using measure by measuring the uh, voltage and current of the particular uh, specimen and for that we can use the four probe method we can probe we can take a specimen and we can uh, put four probes to measure two for voltage and two for current and we can measure the voltage and current in order to find out the conductivity as we know that the resistance of any material can be given by rho uh, into or say r is equal to rho ln rho into a by t and one can say that the band gap is proportional to the conductivity eg eg is equal to kt ln rho or say kbt ln rho kb is the boltzmann constant here now uh, rho is the conductivity actually the actual the real conductivity of any conductor any conducting material or any material can be found with a correction factor this correction factor it is actually the function of w and s what is w w is the width of the specimen and s is the distance between two probes as we have seen that uh, we use the four probe method 
the average distance between the pro uh, probes is utilized here and g using the g g7 function one can find out that it is it has the value uh, if w is 0.23 mm and s is 2.0 mm then uh, g7 function has the value 12.37 so the actual row can be found out with row 0 upon 12.37 and one can see here that row 0 is v upon i into 2 pi s now this is the observation table that we can see actually uh, from the first equation here of energy band gap one can see that there are three quantities which can vary first is energy band gap another is temperature and the third one is the uh, resistivity rho sorry conduct uh, resistivity rho and rho can be uh, utilized can be found from v by i so if we make current constant i is equal to say 3 milliampere current and we can measure if we increase the temperature the, there will be a change in the voltage across the two probes of the specimen and one can measure the rho zero one can measure the temperature in celsius one can calculate now the temperature in kelvin the resistivity rho as ohm into centimeter and one can calculate log rho base 10 and 10 raised to 3 divided by t k you must be uh, wondering that why the last two columns are there actually one can uh, plot the graph of log rho versus t raised to 3 into t uh, t inverse into 1000 and using this one can find out the slope and as as you can see in the mathematical thing the slope of the curve is given by uh, eg upon 2k and with the equation uh, mentioned in the previous slide one can find out eg is equal to 2k log rho base e divided by 1 over t and with the mathematical things to convert log e into log uh, base 10 one can find out that uh, the eg of the given specimen can be uh, found from this equation now uh, using this uh, eg value one can classify the solids in three parts first is conduction band another is valence uh, sorry first is uh, the conductors or metals another is semiconductors and third one is insulators one can see here in the metals the conduction band and the valence band they are overlapping each other means it has a very small value of energy gap that is 0 0.01 ev why why is it so because say uh, in in any of the metal the valence band electrons valence band uh, levels energy levels they are very partially filled and the electron requires a very small energy to move into the conduction band and as and when it gets the energy from external source or say from temperature increase or from thermal vibrations it will get the energy and it will move to the conduction band it is very much uh, 